welcome to Asbury's Echoes. This is Rhonda and Andrew, or Drew, and this is our floss tube that is mainly cross stitch. And um, I throw in some crafts now and then, or other things that I like to do. And Drew likes to chime in and just show things that he's been busy doing during the week. Um, it is Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's to everybody. I'm actually wearing red. I think it's the only thing I could find red in my closet. Um, I don't usually dress colorful. dress colorful or dress for um, the holidays anymore. So um, I think when you stay home all the time, that kind of just goes by the wayside. When I was working at the school as an associate, I would try to um, maybe dress a little more. For the holidays and things like that but happy valentine's day and um beautiful day here in iowa it's nice and actually kind of warm i think it might be supposed to get up to in the 50s so for us that's spring-like weather um we don't do much for our valentine's day do we we no, really don't. We don't um i might surprise everybody with some chocolates and that's about it Sometimes I'll make a special meal. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do. You excited for that? Uh -huh. um, and I really don't decorate much for Valentine's Day either. But I did pull a couple. I forgot one of them, but that's okay. Um, a couple of the hearts that I have. And I keep them up pretty much year round. So these I've had. I made this, oh gosh, years and years ago. And I... I think it might be a Stacy Nash. I'm not sure if anybody knows they can um, correct me because I really don't. I really don't remember. I keep this hanging on a um, cupboard door. I just think it's really sweet. And I don't think I've ever done this before, but I, and I didn't even remember doing it, but I put little X's all the way around it to finish it off. I might have to try and do that again it's kind of pretty that way so there's that one and this one that drew says is um he thinks it's ugly but i made this years ago when i first started getting into prims and um i've crafted i've always crafted and i made this years ago and i just like to keep it out all the time because i think it's kind of pretty was it a pattern or I don't remember if it was a pattern or if it was something that I had seen and just thought, oh, that's really cute. I'm going to try and make one. I don't remember. This, this was an old, um, yeah, it's a candlestick and it was glass. It was a glass candlestick. And I coated it with, um, I think it was, it was either Elmer's glue or it could have been Mod Podge. I don't remember with um, cinnamon in it and then just painted it. It makes it look really grungy. And then I obviously stained this really, really good. And I stained this cheesecloth really, really good and put an old button on there. And now I'm thinking I need to make some, I need to make some pins. What is it called cheesecloth? Some heart, heart shaped pins to stick in there. That's just an old corsage pin. It looks like. What is it called So anyway, cheesecloth um i i think they used it to when they were making cheese but you can use it for lots of different things in the kitchen you can use it when you're straining straining things yeah. never heard of it i'm sure i've got some around here somewhere i'll have to get it out and you can research that research what cheesecloth is used for sound like a plan and yesterday, I dug out my old um, punch needle. I haven't done punch needle for a long, long time. But Doreen with Privies and Prims, she does beautiful punch, punch needle work. And um, she actually punches um, for, a, for a store for their models. So she's a model puncher. But she had this, she shared this one, and this was actually her pattern, and she has it on her Etsy shop. And um, you can find her at Privies and Prims. And I just, I thought it was so sweet. Hers is red. She's done hers in red and cream. 
and I decided to do mine in blues. I'll leave it out all the time. Probably I'll hang it somewhere. And then I coffee stained this because I didn't have a lot. I used DMC cotton, um, but I only had blue and I think it was ecru, ecru. I don't even know how to pronounce that. And I wanted it to be a little darker. So I did coffee stain it last night. And my um, punch needle skills are very lacking. I can, you can see in spots where you can actually see the, the weaver's cloth. But when I, um, when I coffee stained it, that kind of darkened it up. So you don't see it like you did because it is white, but it's very cute. And I will leave this one up too. But that was my um, quick little, I started it yesterday and got it all punched last night. And then I put it together this morning. I put, I just um, put a hole in the back to stuff it. And I stuffed it with some fiber fill and then put some wool over it. And I just ordered labels. They're iron-on labels that Doreen, again, um, shares that she uses. And they are from, it's called Ever Emblem on Etsy. And I'll link that down below. So I'm anxious to get those. But they'll, they're an iron-on label that will say Made with Love by um, Rhonda Miners. I think that's what they, no, Handmade. I think I chose the Handmade. Handmade by Rhonda Miners. So I want to start putting those on the um, backs of my, my um, stuff that I make. I just thought that was really cute. So that's what I did for Valentine's Day. And of course, I've got one of my, my Valentine pillows sitting up there. That's about the extent of my um, um, displaying things anymore for holidays. I try and change something up there once in a while if I think about it. And that's about it. Look at that. My apps hmm? are moving. Why are your apps moving? You shouldn't be on your phone. Uh -oh. I apologize. Drew got, um, what are these called? Microphone. Microphones. Microphones. He was all excited, and I keep hitting mine, so I'm hoping it doesn't. There's something new. Um, I got them from Timu for like 15 bucks, so we'll see what they're like. They're either really horrible or they're okay. I'm not expecting much from them. And I keep bumping mine, so I apologize if it if you hear that. I don't know. We'll see. I didn't realize that our um, sound was bad, but he seemed he thinks that we needed something special, so. Little things, yeah, and we don't do Timu often or Tamu. I think it's Tamu, isn't it? I there was a those. commercial on during Super Bowl, and I think they were saying Tamu. Maybe I don't, I don't know. Tamu. Did anybody else watch the Super Bowl? I don't enjoy football, but my folks came over, and Joe and Drew were here, and um, for some reason, the second half for us was horrible. We were watching it on YouTube TV and it was all SpongeBob. SpongeBob and Patrick were doing all the commentaries and um, they kept sliming everybody in the field and or in the stands and the field was all funky colors and it was not fun. I did not enjoy that at all. We found out later that if we had watched it on Hulu, we wouldn't have seen that. So I hope we never have to experience that one again. That was not fun. And my parents did not appreciate it either. You're a foster kid, aren't you? Realize that? Huh? You're for foster, not that. I know. So anyway, I apologize. We went to the antique store last week, didn't we? <laughs> Normally I walk in and walk out with nothing. I just like to go in and um, wander around and see all the fun things. And um, that's, then I'm done. It's just a nice little break for the day. But for some reason last week, I kept finding things I just had to bring home. And um, I turned them into other things. So one of the things that I brought home was this little, I don't know if it's an antique or not. I really don't know. But it reminded me so much of a, an old feed scoop. I don't know if you grew up on a farm. Um, my, dad, my dad still has one in, in the feed shed that he uses he maybe. Some. Does he still use it? Um, and I, yeah, you can still buy them, I think. But the old antique ones are really cool, and they have like a wooden wooden back, and I just love them. I've seen where you can; they don't have this little handle. Some of them, and I don't think Dad's does. And you can set it this way and put a big candle in it. 
they're obviously a lot bigger. Anyway, I just thought this was the cutest little thing. And um, Ken at the antique store, he thought it was kind of an odd thing. He says, what is that? And I said, well, I, I think this is what it reminds me of. But I said, it's going to become a pin cushion. And he looked at me kind of funny, like, okay, wow. you do what you want. So <laughs> I turned that into a pin cushion and I thought it just turned out really cute. Of course, I put a couple of my pins that I made, and this is an old, old antique um, hat pin. But there's that, and then I had to make a needle minder with the same material. And it's uh, magnetic, of course, and I can just keep it right there and stick my needle on there. So there was the first thing that I did, brought home. And... Then, of course, I found this box, and I am a sucker for boxes. It's a little rough. I mean, it's. I tried to clean it as best as I could, and somebody had started painting it. And there's some, like, gray and white, and there was a bunch of white up here on this corner, and it was all crackled, and you can see it there, too. And I tried some different things and ended up um, sanding it. It seemed to work the best. But it's got Lily of the Valley on the front, and I love Lily of the Valley. Don't even touch it. No, there's a whole bunch. There's a whole patch of it right out here. So this spring we'll oh. have Lily of the Valley, and the, just the fragrance of Lily of the Valley is just wonderful. And I probably would have just passed this up, but when I opened it up, it had a JP Coates. Let's say J and P Coates Best Six Cord Spool Cotton. Ask for it says. So of course that had to come home and i don't think this is original because underneath you can see there's um pencil somebody wrote pencil and i think it says johnny over here the lighting in here is really bad so i can't really see and i think it says for this is johnny over here and for netty n-e-t-t-y and then there's some more writing but it's coming out from underneath that i think that's just a sticker somebody put in there oh you're gonna try and see it and I turned that into a pin cushion also. There's writing. Yeah, there's writing. I think this is Anne too. Anne. I just love that kind of stuff. And so it's just like this. And I made a pin cushion. <coughs> They're so simple to make. Just a piece of fabric. And <coughs> you um, cut it in a circle and just gather it up and then stuff it. And then take um, take some more thread. And go in I don't know if it matters I don't remember if I went in from the bottom and around and pulled tight I think I just did four on this one and then that old button and I found that old button a while back I was digging through my um, jar of antique buttons that I had found, yeah that I had gotten up at the antique store a while back and I just thought that one was really sweet it's got it looks like a like a um, quilt quilt design I don't know and it had a name I looked it up and it did have a name in the manufacturer and I don't remember anymore I'll have to look for it again so there was that I just like to repurpose things I think it's fun if you can find something and rescue it and turn it into something else yeah you drag things home and then nothing gets done with them right mm -hmm. someday um, what else did I do? This one. I thought this was fun. This is an old. I'm not sure what it is. Is this for um, sauerkraut maybe or cabbage to cut cabbage with? This move. Well, it doesn't now because when I got my um, design in there, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> it's stuck. But this moves. So you, you, you put it like this and it goes. You can pull it up and. I think it slices. I thought maybe it was cabbage, maybe. I don't know. If anybody knows, please please let me know. Um, yeah, I had this one. I've had this one hanging up on the wall for a long, long time. It does probably just fell on your Probably. Head. It's dusty. But it was missing um, this piece. So this piece, it will come down to here, and then it stops. There's a wooden, wooden stopper thing in there, and it stops, and then you go back. You just go back and forth. And then it's open on the back. So um, cheese, maybe? I don't. 
I really don't know. But anyway. Now it's a horse. Now it's a horse. Yeah, now it's a crane. I saw it and um, brought it home and then thought, well, what am I going to put in it? So I don't know why I chose a pony. Um, I don't know. And I don't know what I'm going to call it. These remind me maybe of um, like pennies from penny rugs. Anybody who's ever done that? I've made a couple penny rugs. They're fun to do with wool. Um, penny rug? Is that like the basketball downstairs? You put pennies over basketball? No. <laughs> I don't know what that is. is a That's a bowling ball. Oh, a bowling and that ball. was an old um, project that Abby did for 4 H. A lot of pennies all over them. Covered it in pennies and then shellacked it or put something over it and then it would sit outside. It was a yard ornament. Yeah, that was a um, 4 H project. But I don't know if it ever was finished. It's it, no, it was half. It's not there anymore. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we ever finished it. I think it was something got got started and didn't get finished. So anyway, there's that one. I thought that was th this was fun. It was fun to um, turn into a a frame type thing to hang on the wall. And then after I got the horse done, I thought, hmm, that would have looked really cute with a house. So maybe if I ever find another one, that's what I'll do come up with a house for it. Then I have one more. This one, I don't think I've cleaned or anything. It's, it's dirty. And it's just a little box. It says jewelry on the top. And it's not very big. It says jewelry. It reminds me of um, like a pencil case. Yeah, pencils would fit in there. Really nice. <laughs> And then I so I designed or stitched this up real quick to put over to put on top of it. I just thought it neat. I thought, well, I could stitch something really cute and stick on top, but I don't know how I'm going to get it on there because I don't really want to um, permanently damage this. I don't know that it matters because I don't think this is ever going to be worth much of anything at all. I think it was like I don't know, less than five bucks. So um, I have to figure that out. I don't know what I'm going to do. I want to put it somehow or other. I want to put it on the top. Um, I just have to figure out how I'm going to do that. So we're going to stay away from the antique stores for a while. because I, I don't need to do that. I need to stay away. Not that any, any of it was very expensive. But anyway. So that was kind of the fun things that I did this week. Um, I did get a couple things finished. Actually, I got four finishes. I don't have a whole lot today. Um, I did a couple more word, word pillows. I had a lot of suggestions. People were suggesting, saying that they'd like this or like that. And so I just started. I pulled a couple of them. This one says butter molds. And really, that's what I had gone to the antique store for, was to see if I could find a butter mold. And he did have one. I didn't look any any further because um, I'd already picked out so many other things I didn't think I needed to drag home a bunch of butter molds. Um, I do remember there used to be an antique store in town that I just loved to go visit. And it was just a big old two-story home that she had turned into an antique store and Barb had the most beautiful antique things in there and she had had a bunch of butter molds and I'd always thought I was going to get some of those and bring them home and I never did and now I wish I had because that that antique store is gone now and the, the, the house is gone now and it was just fun to go in there. Barb would be in there and um, her friends and they'd be sitting in there in the kitchen area having coffee and talking and it just was it was just a fun place to go and visit. But anyway, I did butter molds and I did old firkins. I love old firkins. I think I have one. And that's a plenty because I don't have room, but I do love old firkins. So those were that's a, a couple I'll show you when I when we're done here. Those were the um two that I made this week. And I've got some more in um, progress. And I was going, wanted to ask people, I used to always, when I make my pillows, I used to always um, leave an opening in the seam and then fill it, stuff it with whatever 
These are stuffed with, um, I've got fiber fill in, this, in the corners. And then I fill it with the crushed walnut shells. And then I put some um, fiber fill, stuff it again in the back before I stitch it shut. But I used to always, always, the only way I ever did them was the seam. And then I'd sew up the seam. And I try and make it, I try to use um, thread that was as close to matching my linen and my backing as I could. But I thought that to me, it looked very primitive. I did very small stitches. You could see them, but not, they weren't glaring. And for some reason here recently, I started, um, well, this one's not done very well at all, but um, leaving the hole in the back and stuffing it. And I like that way too. I don't think it's as easy to stuff, but I like the look of um, the patch on the back because that is also very primitive. And then I'm going to start doing what Doreen has, has showed, put the label, the um, iron-on label that says handmade with my name. Which do you prefer? I, I don't know. I can't decide which one I prefer. I mean, I could still stitch it here i could still do this and you could still put a patch and you could still put the iron on label i just don't know which way do you prefer do people prefer the primitive look with the um seam left open and then stitched up later i don't know the only other issue i have is i don't get to this part i get them stitched up stuffed and do this and then I, I move on and I ha I've got all these pillows here at the house that I have stitched and I haven't actually finished so I need to do that for a while there for a very few very short while I was taking leftover pieces of the linen and handwriting um, a stitch by in my name and then even the name of the pattern and the date but I quit doing that I don't know why I just did so I thought maybe, well, if I have the iron-on ones, I'd be more apt to do it, to stick those on there. I don't know. And if I use those, then I have to finish. I mean, I have to put the wool um, piece to cover up the hole. So I don't know. I don't know which one's better. I don't know which one I prefer. I don't know. They're all cute. I don't know. I just thought I'd ask you guys. And then I have two more um, here, Mike. Easter ones. Where is my mic? I apologize. This isn't probably going to work. Um, two more Easter ones. I did this one. And see, there again, I'm going to have to finish that. I've got hip. This one's hippity hoppity. Easter's on its way. I sing that song. As soon as it's even close to being Easter, I'm, I'm singing that song constantly, aren't I? I don't know why. And that's the only words that part of it I know is hippity hoppity. Easter's on its way. Here comes Peter Cottontail. That's that's part of it too. So this is this one. That's this one. It's all stitched. All of these are stitched on my Nate Burkus um, upholstery linen that I get through Joann's. And I was thinking it was a 32 count, but Doreen with Privies and Prims, she had um, one of the calculator things. I need to get one. And she thinks it looks closer to 36 and so we're going to start calling it 36 count and it it probably is because they are it is small i mean it is small but i just i love it i i love stitching on it it's a little more expensive but you get a huge piece of linen when you order through joann's and i think maybe they're at the stores too i don't know i don't get to the store the closest one to us would be iowa city and we don't go to iowa city often so, and when we do, we're usually on a time crunch. So running to Joann's, which we go to Coralville and this would be clear, it, it, we just don't go. So I order it. I did have somebody contact me and say that they'd seen some at their local Joann's, but they thought it was really, really stiff. I've never had it be stiff. It's always, well, this here, this is it. And see, it's not stiff. It's very soft and drapey 
and it doesn't um, wrinkle a lot. As you can see, I you can see how I coffee stained this one. So this is what it looks like. This is the color, and then I put some coffee stain on it. Um, I just brushed this one on. It's not stiff for me. I've never had any be come um, that it was stiff, so I'm not sure. And I had somebody else say they tried it and they could not see the holes. I have never had any problem with that. But when I try to use Osnaberg, I can't find the holes. So I don't know. I know lots of people stitch on Osnaberg. And I would love to be able to stitch on Osnaberg because I love the way it turns out. I think it's a very pretty. But I, don't, I can't find the holes. I struggle with it. So I think that's, I don't know what's odd. So anyway, this was stitched on my Nate Burkus. Um, I don't remember what it's called. I can put the link in the bottom again in case anybody's interested. I think Joanne's is going to be, um, I don't know. I, I'm guessing they've had a, quite a few people order it here recently that probably have never ordered it before. And they're going to stitch on it. They're not going to use it for upholstery. Anyway, this is all DMC. It's been coffee stained. I stained this one after stitching. Yes, after stitching. And I put some trim on that came from Purple Paper Mountain off of Etsy. This one was a, a yellow. Never use, it's not necessarily a color I would normally use, but I just thought it looked springy and matched. There's really not much yellow on this besides the center of the flower. And the little flower sticking around, but there's that one. And I have oh the, the backing fabric. My mom had been over and she had gone through her. She's a quilter. She makes beautiful quilts, and she had gone through her fabric stash and she had some little bits and pieces, and this was one of them. So again, it's not normally a fabric that I would um, use. I tend to just be very plain and use this on about everything because it's simple. But this I, this, I thought was very pretty, and it's springy, and it's also been coffee dyed because I stitched the pillow up, the front and the back, and then I dunk it before I um, fill it. I dunk it in my coffee bath, or my coffee and um, walnut crystal. And I did have somebody comment last time and asked if um, they could see my process. So... Maybe next week I will have, I'll try and have a couple pieces stitched, um, but not dyed. And I'll show the process, but I got to tell you, it's very simple and there really is no, I'm just kind of a fly by the seat of my pants type person when it comes to these things. And I don't do anything special, but I'll show you what I do. And maybe I'll even mix some dye, but um, again, I don't follow a recipe. I, I just don't. I've just done it for so long and. Do you follow a recipe for anything? Generally, no. <laughs> <laughs> I try, but no. So, anyway, here's the other one. Um, I just get a tasket. I thought it, would, it turned out kind of sweet. These both, I had design patterns a long, long, long time ago. And I guess I updated them. I changed them up. I made them a little, I don't know. I just took those two patterns. And I had never um, shown, put them on Etsy or anything. I did them a long, long time ago before I ever started this journey. But um, that's, this, this, that's this one. This Tisketa Tasket. I just thought it was kind of pretty. It's just got little... Um, pink and blue flowers with yellow centers. Again, it's all DMC. It's the same fabric that I pretty much use on everything. It's got a little border with the flowers on it and purple paper mountain um, trim. I need to write down the names. The, the trim comes on little... Um, Spool tie. I mean, it, it's like cardboard, thin cardboard, but it doesn't have the name. So I never can remember what the name of the colors are of the trim or which one. Um, I know it's a chenille. 
but she has different kinds. So I need to start maybe paying closer attention to that and writing down what I use in case somebody wants to, because I know I've had people ask in the past, which one was it? Which one did you use exactly? I need to write them down when I get them so I can remember. And I put that same fabric on the back and I, again, I need to finish it. But that is, that is all I've been up to, I think. We didn't do any fun trips. We didn't go to Des Moines to the um, Capitol building again. or Yeah, we didn't do any of that. We went to the church supper last night, we went to pancake supper. That was about it, wasn't it? Yeah. So, what did you have to share? Every time I go over to my grandma's, I drive home something. Last time it was a vacuum. This time I got some of these old perfume bottles. What are they used to? Avon. Avon perfume bottles. It sounds fancy. So I'm not sure what that is. Um, I don't know. Maybe it had a label or something right here. This one's empty. It almost looks like a, like, like a looking glass or something. Mm -hmm. No, good. that's okay. Yeah, I don't need it to smell. It smells good. I remember the Avon smells. I do. And then we've got a Eiffel Tower. This one's got a little bit left in it at the bottom. I think this one's pretty. Looks like the cap's busted off. They've seen better days. I can Good. smell them. You can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a whole bucket of them. But I, I just... don't know if I can smell them or if it's just because I can remember what they smell. I mean, I remember yeah. they had a lot of them. I remember mom and dad had a lot of them. We've got a whole bucket in the office full of them. And then we've got a bell. This one still has about half a bottle <laughs> in it. I'm surprised it didn't break. He's really fragile. I'm now. surprised you're not sharing the cars. Well, I don't want to clean anymore. Oh, Dad had all a whole bunch of the cars. I can remember them sitting out. That's I can smell bit. that one. It stinks. It's so. Stinks. I don't. It doesn't stink. Oh, there's stuff floating in it. It's nasty. So we, I don't know what I'll do with them. We've got, we've got too many of them. Yeah, you brought a bunch of them home. We had a um, lesson on Avon. He'd never heard of Avon. Uh -oh. <laughs> we still have an Avon lady in town. We do. Um, wow. I haven't looked at Avon stuff for a long, long, long time. I miss those other cool bottles I got. Grandpa still uses. I don't know, but I miss the little, the little trinkets from the like when my daughter was little, and they had those little like little. I remember a little Easter bunny pin, and you opened it up, and it had a little circle. And you could rub your finger in that, and it was like, um, we always call it smelly. Perfume. We called it smelly. Yeah, I think there's probably one or two around here somewhere. But anyway, I think that's all we have for today. Well, well I was at the antique oh. store. <laughs> Go ahead. I was at the, uh, well, I was at the antique store. Oh. I looked on the shelf. I said, what is that? Have you ever seen a green rabbit foot? Have you always wanted a rabbit's foot or something? Because I, yeah, you pick that thing up and <laughs> you, and you green? carry it with you all the time. Does it need to be green? Came from a green rabbit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. I did. Okay. Then I wanna I wanna take you to show my hermit crab tank because I had someone request that. So here it is. It's a seventy five gallon tank. I've got their little uh, water dishes in there. They've got salt water and fresh water. Um, their food, they've got peanut butter and some other wild vegetation, some coconut and stuff like that. Got all the shells. Let's see if I can find one. Put one right down there. Throw it in the sand. Mm, I think that might be one right there. I've got four. And there might be one in that little coconut hide. So then I've got a little, uh, uh, net that I can climb on with a bunch of other stuff. I think there's one right here and one's under the sand um, molting or distressing or doing something. So that's my tank. There's not much to it. It's not as fancy as a lot of people's are. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I haven't seen it yet, so or I haven't seen what he showed you yet. So um, he's done a really good job with that hermit hermit crab tank. And they are fun. They really are fun to, to watch. Now we're debating because it's almost um, chicken, baby chicken time. 
Yeah. And I, I last year I kind of um was it last year or the year before? I kind of went overboard on baby chickens. Year before. Year before. Yeah, I did really bad. But um last year we got some well, no, last year was pretty bad too. Because I remember I'd bought some home and then we ended up That's right. going someplace else and, and brought some of theirs home and then there was a place in Oskaloosa and um don't you remember we walked out? I ordered a couple and we walked out and I went back in and got more because they had another breed that I really wanted to try. I want to get a rooster. Yeah. And I want to get one of mine. It's changed. But then unfortunately our dog likes to eat the chickens and we lost. We try really, really hard, but we were not paying attention apparently. And the chickens were free ranging and got into his um food area we should have gone to Wawa and so he couldn't bring so we ended up losing two or three so of course I feel like I have to replace those this year not that I really need to you because do. we have an abundance of eggs but it's really hard to pass up those baby chicks anyway get off the, that was kind of off the subject because I want a rooster too I had one and he was beautiful and his name was Gilbert and he was a sweet chicken sweet rooster and um he got into the dog area too. So that was not good. That was a sad day. That's not going to happen anymore. We're going to be way more diligent. Anyway, um, I just wanted to give a shout out. I actually sat down and did watch a couple of floss tubes. How do people get to watch those floss tubes? I just can't find the time. And I know when the weather starts getting really nice, I won't be able to watch hardly at all because I will be outside all the time. So um, I did watch, well, I watched Doreen with Privies and Prims, and I got halfway through Sable Stitchers, R Roberta and Lenny. I love to watch them. They are funny. I like the way they um, banter back and forth and the jokes and um, the things that they stitch is just beautiful. And Cindy's Adventures in Stitching, I always try and watch hers. She did a DIY ironing station this time. I don't have room for something like that. But if I did, I'd be bugging Drew here and my husband to make me one because that would be wonderful. What? A DIY ironing station. You'll have to watch that. That one was really, that one would be really handy. And I watched um, Sarah, the rocking chair stitcher. I enjoy her. She lives in Canada and she's, she's young. She's been doing, um, but she stitches. I wish I could find some young, young ladies around here who wanted to learn how to stitch, but she, um, she's been designing too. And she had some really, a couple of really cute um, Valentine designs that she, she showed. They're not prim. She does not stitch primitive, but they were just, they were cute and they'd be really, really cute for little kids. So those were the ones that I have watched so far. I am halfway through the Sable Stitchers. Theirs are long. And so I kind of have to stop and start and stop and start. And then, um, so it's on my computer right now, but it's paused. I'll try and finish that one today. And I did the same thing with Sarah from the rocking chair stitcher. Um, hers is paused. So I've got to finish those two, but I just, there's so many wonderful ones out there that I would love to see. And I just can't seem to find the time. I try and bring it maybe when I'm canning, that'd be a good time when I'm in the kitchen and I can turn it on and I can listen and watch when I need to. But, but, um, I'll be in here for hours at a time. That might be a good idea. That might be when I'll get my um, floss tube swatched and maybe find some new ones. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, it still just amazes me that anybody wants to sit and watch us. And um, we really appreciate everybody. We got some new subscribers and I um, really appreciate that. Um, so what is it Drew they're supposed to do? Like hit, uh, hit the bell. Hit the bell, turn like, subscribe, and hit the bell and turn on notifications. Shake it. It's all free, doesn't cost anything. Um and I guess if you um comment, that helps with my algorithm. I I don't know how that works. 
I did a bunch of questions. I know Drew's reminding me you were going to ask a question, and I think I probably asked I don't know three or four. So um, comment. I try really hard to respond to all the comments. I enjoy the comments. It's fun to um, to talk to other people and and meet new people. And um, I guess it's good for my algorithm, whatever that is. But um, thank you, everybody, and we will see you next week, hopefully.